Hey, my Intune admin friends. Today, we're going to be diving in and looking at how you can secure access to your Microsoft Intune environment. We're going to be talking all about role-based access control, or RBAC for short. And we're going to be talking about scope tags and how all this comes together to secure your Intune environment. So your first question might be, what is role-based access control? And it's a great question. And simply put, it's just a way of limiting what your Intune users can see and change. And there's a couple of things you're going to have to think about as you start setting up these RBAC roles is you know, who even needs access to your Microsoft Intune environment? Is it your level one support, level two, your security team, and so on and so forth? And then what resources can they access? So for example, do Windows admins need to be able to see your iOS devices? Maybe, maybe not, but you're going to be able to control that to that kind of granular level. And then you're going to want to say, what can they actually do with these resources? So for example, if you're a help desk, we may not want you to be able to wipe a device. Or maybe we don't want you to be able to create applications, but we want you to be able to assign applications to different groups within our environment. And then we have scope tags. And that really allows us to control what people can see within the Intune portal. So for example, if you're a distributed company, maybe you have an office in London and then an office in the US, well, we might have Intune admins for both locations. So we want to scope down all the Intune devices that are in London to just our London admins, for example. So we're going to dive into all of that. Let's now just jump into the Endpoint Manager console and get started. Okay, so before we get this party started in Microsoft Intune, just want to mention something. So I'm here in the role-based access control documentation. And before you can go ahead and create, edit, or assign any of these Intune roles, you do need to have one of the following permissions in Azure Active Directory. So you need to be a global admin or you need to be an Intune administrator. So at this point, this is nice and easy to do. You can go ahead and just go to your Azure Active Directory Admin Center, go down to Roles and Administrators, and now you can search for your global administrators or your Intune administrators. But mainly, your Intune administrators aren't often your global admins for Azure Active Directory. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose Intune and then just select our role here. And now we're going to assign a group to this. So I'm going to do Add Assignments. And then from there, if I just scroll down a bit under the Select Members, I'm going to do where it has no members selected, hit that. And then I'm going to choose Intune and my Intune Administrators group and hit Select. And it is you know, really a best practice to use groups here. You don't want just to just add individuals, it makes it harder to manage. Add a group, then you can easily add, remove people, and so on and so forth. Now let's hit Next. We're not going to dive too far into this as we get more into that privileged identity management world. So I'm just going to choose Active, have it permanently assigned, just type in whatever, Admin, and then do Assign. And now at this point, we're going to have this active assignment so our Intune admins can now manage everything within Microsoft Intune. So let's dive into this Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center and start looking at roles and scope tags. All right, so we're going to go down to Tenant Administration. And then from here, we're going to select Roles. And we're going to spend a lot of our time in this All Roles and in Scope Tags. So if we select All Roles, the first thing you're going to notice is there's a bunch of built-in roles. And if you want to learn a little bit more from the documentation we're in earlier, you can see here it gives you kind of the cliff notes of all the different roles. So for example, a read-only operator can view users, devices, configs, apps, so on and so forth, but can't make changes to Intune. So definitely have a read through here. If you want to get a bit more granular from Intune, you can just select a role and then go to properties. And now you can see all the different permissions. It can read Android for work, you know, they can do different things like wipe, assign, so on and so forth. So at this point, you definitely want to review all the built-in roles and see if any of them make sense for your organization. And if they do, of course, assign all your users to these roles. However, if you look at it and you think, you know what, there's a few things I want to tweak, that's where you can go ahead and create custom roles. So to be able to create a custom role, you just need to come here and click Create. But in our scenario, just to give us a rundown, is we're going to create a role for our help desk, so for Contoso help desk. But then what we want to be able to do 
is scope down our London team, so our London admins, to be able to actually only manage users within London and devices within London. So, and then any other kind of relevant objects. So we're going to look at some policy stuff as well to see some fun things that we can do with scope tags. So let's go ahead and hit create. And then from here, we just want to give it a name. So we're going to do Contoso help desk and then choose next. And at this point in permissions, this is where you can get granular. What can these users within this role actually do within Microsoft Intune? So there's no real magic bullet of what you want here. You're probably gonna have to add a few things, make some changes, see how it looks, so on and so forth. But I'm just gonna go ahead and really give remote tasks. I'm gonna give device configurations, and I'm gonna make sure that our users here of Intune can see all the devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then come back. So at this point, I finished configuring up my role. So we can see here in device configuration, set things up. And this is really easy to use. You can just select between no or within yes. And most things have things like assign, create, delete, read, update, so on and so forth. So I've done that for device configurations, manage devices, and remote tasks, so on and so forth. It doesn't really matter what I've done in this role. You're going to make this specific for your organization. I've just set something up for our testing and for this demo. So let's go ahead and hit next. And then from here, we've got scope tags. And for the most part in this role section, we just wanna leave this default. I mean, this isn't the scope tag that we use to control what our admins can actually see within Microsoft Intune. This is setting up a scope tag for this specific role. So at this point, I'm just gonna say, especially while you're learning all of this, we're just gonna leave this as default and then hit next. And at this point, you can review everything that we've done, and then we can go ahead and hit create. And now what we can see is that outside of all these built-in roles, we now have the Contoso help desk role, and this is a custom role. So now we have our role. What we now are gonna do is go create the scope tag. And the reason we're gonna do that is because I wanna actually assign the scope tag to this role later on. So let's dive over to scope tags. And then from scope tags, we can see all the different tags that we have. So right now I just have default. And this means that the default tag has been assigned to all the resources that are really eligible for scope tags within my environment. So here's where we can create those new tags for like the London office and then assign that to a role and make sure that only you know, London administrators can see devices, resources, apps, policies, whatever it is within that London context. Or if you went to Germany, or if you went to US, or a Seattle office, like in the example here, or for different reasons, right? You might have it as a department base or something else. But in our case, what we're gonna do is click Create. And then from here, we're just gonna give this scope tag a name. So I'm just gonna choose London, and then we're gonna go to Next. And now from Assignments, what we can do is we can assign a group which has devices in it, and then they're gonna be automatically tagged with the scope tag that we're creating. So I could do add groups, and then we could select London, for example, and my London devices. And now any device within this group is automatically gonna be assigned this scope tag. So I don't have to go to the device, add it manually, or anything funky like that. As soon as they come in the group, they're gonna get tagged up. So let's go next. And at this point, we're happy. So we're gonna create this. And now we have our default scope tag, and then we have our London scope tag. So let's go back to all roles, because at this point, our custom role, which is our Contoso help desk, hasn't been assigned. Okay, so at this point, we wanna set an assignment for this Contoso help desk role. And this assignment, what it's gonna do for us is now we're gonna say these Intune admins are gonna have these permissions, they're gonna be able to see these users, devices, that kind of stuff. So Let's go ahead and do a sign, and then we're gonna give it a name. So we'll do London Help Desk, and then do Next. And at this point, we now wanna select the admins that are gonna be assigned to this role. So I'm gonna do Add Groups, and then from here, I'm gonna do Intune, and then I'm gonna do our Intune London Help Desk, and then hit Select. And now we wanna to go to Scope Groups, and Scope Groups is really important. What we're gonna say here, is that these admins of Intune can only target policies, applications, remote tasks, so on and so forth. 
to either a specific set of users or devices. So you could do add all users or add all devices, but we can really target this down. So I can do add groups here and do London users and London devices. What this will now mean is that, for example, I could only deploy or target an application to London users. And if you're not part of this group, I'm not going to be able to target you. And now let's move on to scope tags. And then from scope tags, this is why we just created one. Here we can do our select scope tags and I can choose London and then hit select. And now these you know, Contozo London help desks are only going to be able to see the objects that have this London scope tag. Now let's hit next again, review that we've got this all good to go. And now let's go ahead and hit create. So at this point, if we recap, we have our new role, our Contozo help desk, and we now have our actual new scope tag for London. And what we're saying here is that our London help desk admins what they can do is they can only deploy and target applications to anyone within that London users and London device group. And they can only see resources that are actually tagged with London. Okay, so now let's go have a look at our environment. So if we go to devices, what we can see here is that we have two Windows devices. And if I go down to all devices, we have a Windows 10 desktop here. And then we also have this device called London Device 01. So, if we go into desktop and we go to properties, what we should expect to see here if we open up scope tags is that London hasn't been assigned to this. And that's absolutely correct. So this wasn't part of my London device group. So therefore it hasn't been automatically assigned the London scope tag. But if we go back to devices and now we choose the London device 01 and we go down to properties, what's really cool now, if we go to open, is boom, look at that. We can now see automatically that we have the London tag already selected. So at this point, we should already know what that means is that the London help desk are gonna be able to see this device, London device 01, but they're not gonna be able to see that Windows 10 device that we just looked at. And that's exactly what we want here. And now what's also really cool is that scope tags don't just work for devices, but other resources within Microsoft Intune. So for example, I could come down to configuration profiles and we can see here I've got iOS, Windows 10, so on and so forth. But what I can do is I could maybe go into this Windows 10 London restrictions. And then from here, we could go to properties. And what we could do is we could do edit on the scope tags and then do select scope tag. And now I could actually add the London scope tag to this Windows 10 device restriction. Now what should happen here is once we save that is if we went back into those restrictions, let me just go back here, is that the new London help desk admins here, they should only be able to see this Windows 10 London restrictions and they shouldn't be able to see anything else because these will have the default scope tag and this is the only one assigned to London. So really that's it on creating the roles and looking at the different scope tags within objects here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to log out of our admin and dive in as our help desk user and see what this experience looks like for us. Okay, so let's now check out the experience for our London help desk admin. Quickly here, I'm in Azure Active Directory. Just wanted to show you there's no funny business going on. So we're in the group here for the London help desk and only my account has been assigned. So now if we jump over to the Microsoft Endpoint Manager console, let's have a look what happens. So first of all, if you go to tenant administration and you go to roles, what you can do is have a look at my permissions and this will show you everything that I have access to now. So that's one thing to look at, quite interesting. But next thing we wanna do is if we go back now to devices, and we now look at our Windows devices. Before, there used to be two. So we had the Windows 10 device that we had, or its default name, and then we had this London device 01. And look at that. This has done exactly what we wanted. We can now see this London device. I could go ahead if I wanted to and do some form of remote actions on it. And if we go to properties, the reason we can see this is because it's got that scope tag for London. So 
already we're in a good state. We know that this is doing kind of what we expected. So if we go back to devices and we go back to configuration profiles, the next thing we saw earlier is that we had more than one profile in here. But now all we can see is that Windows 10 London restrictions. And this is pretty awesome because now all I'm seeing is what I was a menace. And if we go to properties, what's really interesting is if we now went to assignments. So we said, yeah, you could deploy this. But if we went into assignments earlier, we said we can only deploy to our London users and our London devices. So if I went in here and added a group, and let's just say, you know, maybe I did our autopilot lab for some reason, and then we do select in here, and then we do review and save and save again, we can see here that I don't have enough permissions to update this. So if we go back now then, so let's just do cancel on that, and let's try this again. So let's do edit on here, and then let's just do add a group, and let's do London users, and now we select that, review and save, and save again. Now our profile has been saved correctly. So that just goes to show that when we set up our role correctly and our scope tags and everything else, we can really define who has the ability to not only create, edit, and modify, but also assign to specific groups within our Azure Active Directory here. So the next thing that I think is, is really interesting here, because we have these scope tags set up, if we go back to the configuration profile again, and I now do create profile, and let's just create any old thing. So it's just Windows 10. You know, we'll just do a, a, a template here, admin template, create. Let's just give it a, a name, Win 10 test. Do next again, and we'll just choose any old personalization here. It doesn't really matter for our demonstration. But now this is what I want to show you. Now, because I'm in the London group, I only have access to things in the London tag. What it's going to do is automatically add that scope tag when I go and create things in Microsoft Intune. This way, I don't end up creating something and then I don't have access to see it. I always have access to the things that I create. So we've covered quite a lot in this video from roles to scope tags. So if there's any confusion, make sure you ask any questions down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Secondly, if you've enjoyed this and you think you can get some value from more of my Intune videos, make sure you check out my playlist all around Microsoft Intune. And hopefully again, you've enjoyed this, got some value from it. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and we'll see you next week for another video.